Box shadows are cool and maybe one of the easiest ways to make your design pop a little bit more. The box shadow property in CSS is for putting shadows on elements. This works very much in the same way as the text shadow property that we looked at previously, except it will take two additional values. Box shadow accepts inset, horizontal offset, vertical offset, blur, spread, and color. The only required values are horizontal and vertical offsets. The others are all optional. The inset value makes the shadow go on the inside of the element. The blur is the amount of softness. Spread is the amount of space until the blur starts. Color by default matches the color value of the element. And it is possible to use multiple shadows. We separate them by commas. Let's go in and see how the box shadow works. Here's the file we'll be working on for the box shadow. I have several divs, each with unique classes. I already have some starting CSS. Mainly the div elements are displaying as inline block. They have both width and height. They have a border and a margin. Let's start off by adding some box shadow. I'll target example one to begin with. I'm going to use the property of box shadow. Then we'll just go ahead and add a horizontal offset of 20 pixels and a vertical offset of 20 pixels. If we save and refresh, you can see that I get the box shadow. It is currently hard edged. If we want to make the box shadow softer, we need to add some blur. So all we do is pass in another value. I'll add a blur amount of 10 pixels. When we refresh in the browser, you can see the difference between no blur and adding some blur. Now before we delve in farther into the box shadow, let me give you a few tips. When you use box shadow, it's a good idea to use a low opacity on the shadow. The two examples that I just showed you have way too dark and intense of a shadow. This does not look realistic and it really doesn't enhance the design at all. When you want to make the item appear elevated, we'll increase the blur. And I'll show you what this looks like in just a moment. You also want to avoid using offsets that are going in different directions. The light would only be coming from one direction. So if you're going to add the box shadow to multiple elements, make sure that the light direction for the horizontal and vertical offsets matches. And finally, if you want to add depth to your design, box shadows is a great solution. Let's continue to look at some other examples on our web page. I'll go ahead and I'll target example three. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pass in a color value. I'm going to use RGBA and I want to use a black with a very low opacity. So I'll use 000 and let's just use 20%. Now, when we save our page and refresh, you can see that we have a much softer drop shadow and it looks more realistic. We can continue to augment these settings. So let's make the offset come from a different direction. I'll reduce the amount and use a negative value for the horizontal offset. Instead of being on the right, the drop shadow will be on the left. We'll do the same thing for the vertical offset and instead of being on the bottom, it will be on the top. Let's increase the blur amount and we'll save. And if we refresh, you can see how the drop shadow is much softer and it's coming from a different direction. As you can see, if I had multiple items with drop shadows, I normally would not want to change the direction because it causes confusion. The light source should always come from the same direction. But in this example, I'm going to break that rule so I can show you how some of these things work. Let's see what spread does. I'm going to use the exact same values that we applied to example three and apply them to example four. For this one, however, I'm going to go ahead and add an additional value before the color. This is going to be the spread. I will change this to 10 pixels. If we save and refresh, you can see that the drop shadow now appears thicker. And what's really happening is the drop shadow doesn't even start for 10 pixels. The spread makes it move out. I did mention 
that the box shadow is tied to the color of the element. So if we go ahead and we set a color to this particular element, I'm going to go ahead and just pass in some values. Now, if I save now and we look at example four, the color hasn't changed. And that's because we've specifically used a color in our box shadow. But if we don't have a color for the box shadow, the box shadow will now inherit the color from the color property. And you can see now my shadow is appearing as yellow. Let's go ahead and target example five. For this one, I'm going to use a negative spread. I'll set the horizontal and vertical offsets back to positive values. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a blur amount of 10. And for the spread, I'm going to use negative 10 pixels. If we save now and refresh, you can see how the drop shadow is more subtle. If we compare it to example three, where the drop shadow is using similar values, 10 for the horizontal, 10 for the vertical, we have a slightly higher blur amount, which just makes it softer. Using a negative spread will suck the shadow in a little bit. So in this way, you can adjust how far the shadow goes from the edge of the element. Let's target some of our other elements, but this time let's add multiple box shadows. I'm going to use the box shadow property, and this time I'm going to use zero for the horizontal, zero for the vertical. We'll go ahead and set zero for the blur amount, and then I'm going to set 10 pixels for the spread. I'm going to also specify a color, and I'm going to use an RGB value of 11, 141 and 219. If we save now and we look at the element, you can see that it looks like a border is appearing. Since we don't have any blur and no offset, only a spread, the box shadow is going to appear evenly around the edge of the element. It is worth noting that this is going on the outer portion of the element. If we want to add additional shadows, we separate the subsequent shadows with a comma. And I like to put these on another line because I think it helps to make the page more readable. Again, I'm going to use zero and zero for the horizontal and vertical, zero for the blur. I'll use a slightly larger spread, 20 pixels this time, and I'm going to set a different color. This time I'll use a hex value. And finally, we'll add one more shadow. This one is going to have a 30 pixel spread, and I'm going to use an RGB value for the color. If I save now and we look at example six, you're going to see that it appears with multiple borders on the outside of the element. It is worth noting that if we really increase the spread of these elements, this particular object will overlay on top of other items. So you do want to be careful if you have adjacent elements and you are adding the spread to your elements and it's spanning out and could negatively affect those other elements. If you want to prevent this from happening, you can basically change the position of the box shadow. So instead of being on the outside of the box, we can put it on the inside of the box. To do that, we would go ahead and we would add the inset keyword to the beginning of each of these definitions. If I refresh, you can see how now the box shadow is on the inside of the box. The box itself does not change in size at all, but the box shadow will just appear on the inside. This is a great way to add multiple borders, since that is not something that you can easily do with the border property. Let's look at examples seven and eight side by side, so I can show you how the amount of blur will make the element appear as if it is farther away from the background or closer to the background. I'm going to use zero for the horizontal offset, 10 pixels for the vertical offset, five pixels for the blur amount, and then I'm gonna pass in an RGBA value 
and we'll use black once again and let's just use 30 percent if we refresh you can see that i have a drop shadow that appears on the bottom since i did not use an offset for the horizontal this only appears on the bottom portion i'm going to use the exact same values and target example eight but this time i will increase the blur amount substantially when i do that if we look at these two elements it does appear that example eight is sitting higher or further off of the page because we've increased the blur amount a higher blur amount and even a slightly more transparent blur is going to make the item appear as if it is farther away from the background you can use this to style your pages and create depth for the final box element i'm going to show you a creative way that we can use multiple shadows I'm going to once again set the horizontal offset to zero, the vertical offset to 10, the blur amount to zero. I'm going to use negative five pixels for the spread, and I'm going to set an RGB value. We'll set some additional shadows. So I'm just going to augment some of these settings a little bit and add some different colors to the shadows. If we save now and we view in the browser, you can see I have a really cool effect where it appears that the element is a little more 3D and coming off of the page. So I've accomplished this by not using any sort of horizontal offset. I've increased the vertical offset by 10 for every shadow. I've set the blur to none, so this is hard edged. Then I have decreased the spread amount for each subsequent shadow and specified different colors. As you can see, there are so many ways that you can use box shadows. We have the ability to make endless choices and to really get creative with styling our elements. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this property.